Well, hello everybody, another lesson, and we're going to look at flight planning this time. So, uh, no simulator today, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm very sorry. Um, but we're going to look at flight planning. Now, this extends on from a virtual lesson I did uh, with some of my air cadets on yesterday evening, um, which was Tuesday the 7th. Um, but if you're watching this on the YouTubes and you weren't involved in that, then not to fear. You've not missed out on anything, just some uh, air cadet sort of centric uh, training that, that really, it's a bit dated, I'm honest. But, um, you know, it's all, it's all still good stuff and it's quite interesting. But we're going we're gonna to cover that um, subject matter in the sort of more modern way and more interactive, hopefully. Um, so it will supplement that for, for my Air cadet -y lot. Um, and it will obviously be new, slightly new for you guys uh, following this on YouTube. So what do we have here? So we have Sky Vector. This is a website. Um, so skyvector.com. This is one of many. Um, but it's quite nice. Um, the, the route we looked at yesterday uh, for those uh, air cadets, um, we went from RF Leeming, I think it was, was it Leeming or Linton? I can't remember. Anyway, up here in t north of the UK, um, we flew down to Coningsby, I think it was. It was either Coningsby or Cottesmore. Uh, we'll do, we'll say Coningsby for argument's sake. I think it was Cottesmore actually. Cottesmore's down here, uh, which isn't actually shown. No, it's not. Huh. Oh, because it's it's actually been updated to Kendro. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, there, that shows how uh, up to date these this this particular website is. That's good. So Cottesmore, uh, EGXJ, and then over to Marham which is over here in uh, East Anglia. So let's just have a quick look in Sky Vector and what we can do. Now, unfortunately, I can't zoom in. Oh, in fact, I say that. Yes, I can, actually. The wonders of Google Chrome. There we go. Lovely. Um, so now this is all out of focus, and I can't remember. Where's... Was it Leeming? Wait, well, let's, let's take Leeming. There's Linton. Uh, so Leeming's here. Uh, yeah, let's go with Leeming then. So Leeming, E-G-X-E. So let's key that in, E-G-X-E. Right, fantastic, we've got a start point. Our destination is Marum, uh, which is E-G-Y-M. E-G-Y-M. And our, we've got a, so that's already plotted a line on here, but we actually want a via, wait, well, let's do, Let's do Wittering. Um, so EGXT is Wittering. Uh, and hit enter. There we go. And it adds that onto the leg. Fantastic. So we've just planned a route. Excellent. Easy as that. Um, but of course, there's there's a wee bit more to it than that. We get our uh, heading. Uh, back in a minute. Right, sorry about that. Um, just a little jump cut there. Uh, I had something else to do. Cool. Right, so we were looking at oh, we were looking at Sky Vector, weren't we? So <clears throat> here we can see. Uh, oh, need to log in. Fantastic, lovely. Right, and we will be yeah, go away, Chrome. Be in Wickham two one, say. Um. So in here, you can set up, if you create an account, you can set up um, a particular aircraft. Uh, so Wickham 2-1 will be a Cessna 152 that I've uh, set up. So we've got Marham, we've got Wittering as a waypoint here. Sorry, Leeming, Wittering, then Marham. And that's our route, and it's given us some interesting stuff. If we go to Navlog, my Cadetsy types, 
you'll see that this looks reasonably familiar. Okay, we've switched the columns and the rows, but um, it's pretty much what we expect. So this particular symbol here, the D with an arrow through it, that means direct. So we're going to go direct from EGXE, Leeming, to EGXT. Ignore COC and COD for the moment. I'll tell you what they mean in a sec. Uh, and we can see that we are going to be climbing along that route. Um, we've got the wind direction. So this is, it's just automatically pulled that off the, uh, the rest of the internet for, for now. Uh, so we've got the wind direction, wind speed, temperature, um, and uh, deviation. Not deviation? Yeah, uh, where's that? Ah, that, yeah, right, okay, I see. Yeah, don't worry about that. Um, we'll talk about that another day. True airspeed in the climb, 75 knots. This is all part of the aircraft profile that I will have set up. Don't worry, I'm going to show you this uh, in a moment. Um, we've got our track, so that's the path that we want to be flying along. So that is this line here, that's where we want to be going and we want to plot that route across the ground. Uh, our wind correction angle, WCA there, is plus 8 degrees. So we need to add 8 degrees onto this track to give us our true heading. So the nose of the aircraft isn't going to be pointing along this line. It's going to be pointing plus eight degrees. So that's slightly to the right as we come down this line because the wind is coming from the left. And that means that the nose of the aircraft will be pointing slightly into wind. So we'll be crabbing ever so slightly. And that will give us this track. It means we will fly along this line. Convert that to magnetic heading. Add one degree on. That's just the difference between true north and magnetic north at the moment, at the time of creating this video. Obviously, that changes year by year. Our ground speed will be 77 knots. Uh, distance, five nautical miles. Actually, I'll add these two together. I'll, t I'll tell you what TOC means in a moment. So the actual distance um from Leeming to Wittering is 102.8 plus 5 so 107.8 nautical miles uh, our estimated time um on route uh, around about an hour and a half give or take adding these two numbers up here um and then it, uh, what our expected fuel burn is going to be same again from, from Wittering to Marham, all the calculations, it's done it all for us, right? Uh, long gone are the days where you need your little flight computer and swizzling all the dials. And obviously, it still works. It's still good to use. Um, but, you know, real computers exist. Um, and at the moment, it's saying the flight's going to take 1 hour 40. That's accounting for wind and so on and so forth. Um, and we're going to run out of fuel long before we get there. Uh, we can key in the amount of fuel we're going to be taking. So if we change that, we need another 9.6. So that would be, call it another 10. So that would be 56. So let's say we're going to take 70 uh, litres of fuel, litres, kilos. It's on us what our, uh... oh, didn't want to press that button. Never mind. 70, uh, not that one that one regenerate our log and now we can see we actually land with a bit of fuel still to spare and you don't want that on zero obviously because <laughs> then you've got no buffer if you need to fly around or the wind's slightly different or whatever toc arrow sort of gives it away that's the top of climb so it it's able to predict when you will reach your cruise altitude, which at the moment is set for two and a half thousand feet. And TOD is your top of descent. So that's the point at which you will then start descending so that you are 
on the ground by the time you get to Marin. Um, and that obviously your fuel burn is slightly different when you're in climb and when you're in descent as opposed to cruise. And also because your altitude's changing and the winds might be different at different altitudes, all that has an impact. Would be a nightmare to calculate by hand. Perfectly doable, you would make approximations. But you know, with 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 a computer system like this, it can just do it all for you. And that's exactly what we want. Nice and accurate. So that's that's doing it in Sky Vector, and that would mean we'd be flying on, um, you know, a magnetic heading all the way down here, which would be a bit of a pain in the butt. So if we scoot over to Plan G, which we have seen before, um, so pardon me one moment. Uh, Yeah, right, okay, that's fine. So we can do exactly the same in Plan G. Now, Plan G is a bit of freeware software. Um, obviously, you can donate if you wish to donate uh, and all that sort of good stuff. We can do the same thing here. Uh, unfortunately, the zoom doesn't look great on, on the screen, but hopefully you'll be able to see. If I right-click on Leeming, I can start my flight plan at Air Airport EGXE. Click. And in my flight plan, up comes Leeming. Where were we doing? We were doing Wittering. So find Wittering here, right click, add airport to plan. And then over to Marum, add airport to plan. Bang, Leeming, Wittering, Marum. Fantastic. We can pull the winds off, off the internet, key them in on this box, and bang, it updates and you. Yeah, hopefully might be able to see that. Again, I can't zoom in on this annoyingly. We can set up our aircraft profile. So in this case, and this is really small, um, so I'm very, very sorry, but uh, that there is no easy way of me zooming in on this. I suppose I could probably do it that way. That's, that's the best you're gonna get, I'm afraid. Um, so we can see this time I've got set up a, a Grob 115E, so a Grob Tutor. Um, we can key in all sorts of stuff. We can key in takeoff safety speeds. We can key in our rotation speed, so the, the speed at which we actually lift wheels off the ground. Um, our best climb speed, um, our best rate of climb, our flap extension speed, our stall speeds so on and so forth. We can key in loads of stuff which all then goes into the algorithm in the background. We can uh, key in our, our economy cruise speed, our performance cruise speed which will burn more fuel. So we can also key in the amount of fuel we burn if we are flying for the least amount of fuel or if we're flying for the least amount of time. So you can you can get two nice estimates out of that. The maximum amount of fuel we can use, um, the amount of fuel that actually gets left unusable. So it's in the tank, but we can't actually use it because of where the pickups are. Don't worry too much. The amount of reserves that we want left at the end of the route. And key all that in. Let's go for a cruise altitude of three and a half thousand feet, uh, which now you can't see. Three and a half thousand feet, there it is up there. Um, and we get a very similar looking route plan here. Also down here in all your information telling you exactly how much fuel you're going to need, accounting for the reserves you want to take with you as well. Um, and it tells you how much fuel you would need if you were flying in economy or if you're flying in performance modes. And quite interestingly here, actually, the two fuel burns are exactly the same. That doesn't normally happen. Normally your economy would use less fuel because it's economy, but it would take you longer to get there. And we can see to fly this route at 110 knots true airspeed would take a little over an hour. Uh, but if we're in performance mode, it's going to take around about 50 minutes. In fact, no less than that, 40 minutes. But because we're flying for less minutes, the engine is running for less minutes, we burn a little less fuel. But flying at this speed, 
burns a little bit more fuel and the balance and when it all adds up and you work it all out it turns out by actually getting there quicker and flying a bit faster uses exactly the same amount of fuel so that that's quite unusual um yeah i mean there, there's absolutely nothing in it so you know there, there's no apart from the wear and tear on the engine there would be no downside to going faster for this particular example i mean that is pure fluke really absolute pure fluke uh, we get our track and so on and so forth. Um, we can also pull all sorts of uh, different bits of information. So we can get our plan elevation, which actually in this instance is going to be completely pointless because we're going to be flying at the same height. But we could, you know, go in and say, well, actually, at this point, I want to climb a bit. At this point, I want to descend a bit. Do what's called step climbs and step descents. But we get a very, very similar thing out and it, it crunches all the numbers for you. <clears throat> it's also going to give us a suggested altitude to fly at that will be based upon um, the wind so the wind is quite often different at different altitudes so this is going to uh, result in the fastest time and the lowest fuel burn if we fly at seven and a half thousand feet there so that's basic route planning now flying on this heading and dead reckoning all the way down to Wittering for 100 and something miles would be a real pain in the butt and um, nigh on impossible to actually do um, so you'd be looking out for visual reference points all the way down but what we know from our previous lessons is that we now know how to do nav aids so if we look at our route no real nav aids no real nav aids oh there's one. Oh, sorry, I've just added that. Let's just uh, hide range rings. There we go. We can just see an NDB, Sherburn in Elmet, there. And it's bang on the line. So, right click. And, oops, sorry, no. Let's select Leaming first. Right click. Insert NDB after Leaming. Boink. And then it's just added that in for us onto our route. Now, an NDB. We can tune into that and fly straight for it. Great, we can navigate to that. Excellent. Then coming out of the NDB, we're going to be heading further south or south southeast, I suppose. And we can fly outbound roughly on a radial ish. It's an NDB, so it's not great, but it gives you a ballpark. But let's see if we've got any more. Oh, fantastic. Yes, we do. Your fluke, we have Doncaster, so we're going to select that after uh, Sherburn. So right click, insert NDB after. Bang, so Doncaster's now in there as an NDB. So we can now start hopping from radio beacon to radio beacon. Now then, we've got a VOR here, it's not perfectly on route, so let's just keep it in the back of our minds and keep going down. Any more NDBs? Yes, there's one at Cranwell, quite far off route though. Any more for any more? No, we've just got a DME here at Wittering, but no radio beacon. So let's think, right, let's take Gamston then. So if we take Gamston, let's put it in after Doncaster. Uh, so after, there we go. Click, puts a little dog leg in, but now, because this is a VOR and we can fly very accurately on a radial on a VOR, whether it's inbound or outbound, we can see that our radial coming out of Gamston is 177. We can tune that in so we can now fly this exact line all the way down here pretty much until we hit Wittering because Wittering is on this 177 radial. Sorry, um, that's a 177 into, sorry, it's a 164 radial. Looking at the wrong one there. So we can fly that. Brilliant. That's got us all the way to Wittering. Okay, how can we now get to Marham? Now, no nav aids here. Is there a nav aid at Marham? No, there's just a DME. Is there anything further out on this radial? Sort of. We've got a couple of 
NDBs here, but they're quite short range. That one's 22 miles, that one's 37. So if we right click it and show NDB range, we can see it highlighted on here. Oh, sorry, you can actually see that. There we go. These two NDBs here. So we're not going to be able to pick that up until we're pretty much at Marum and we're going to be able to see it there anyway. So that's no good. So that's, oh, wrong. Hide range rings. There we go. There is an NDB here, uh, Great Yarmouth. Okay, so let's show the NDB range. We can almost pick that up at Wittering. So much so that if we flew out of Wittering on a heading of 164, we're going to pick it up pretty quick. And then if we flew straight towards Great Yarmouth NDB from sort of roughly in this area, it's going to take us just south, a smidge south of Marum, give or take. Now the wind is going to have a bit of an impact on this, so it's not ideal for such a long distance, but mm, it, you know, it's an option. We could potentially use that one. The other thing we can do is hide range rings. We can have a look westbound. Let's see if there are any VORs that we could fly a radial out from that way. Mm, not ideal. What's the range on this one? Uh, VOR range. Ah, okay. So uh, Wolverhampton VOR covers. Hang on, where are we? That's Trent. Sorry, you're zoomed in. Massively zoomed in. Wolverhampton. There we go. Wolverhampton's here. This NDB, uh, this VOR, sorry, here. There is an NDB there as well. And that comes all the way out. And the range on that is awesome. So we could key in a radial. So let's show a radial of roughly, and I'm going to purely eyeball this. Uh, let's go with 88 degrees. And let's just, you know, make it a massive radial. No, miles off. So let's try another one. Show radial. Uh, let's do... 85 degrees. Oh, come on, let's let's get it bang on, show shall we? Clear all radials. So I'm going to go with 84 degrees, um, and that's going to put us somewhere. Oh, look at that, bang! So hopefully you can see that line has gone straight through Marum. That's great. So we can fly out of Wittering and then just pick up this outbound radial from Wolverhampton. That's you know a good distance away. But we're going to pick it up and if we fly that radial we will be flying along that line and that's you know pretty damn close good enough absolutely good enough for me so that that's that's a good one that we could potentially use you can also use the dmes and do distance and a bit of dead reckoning and stuff but let's pick the easy mode so when we leave wittering we'll pick out pick up the 084 radial out of Wolverhampton on whatever frequency that was on and that'll take us straight to Marum. There's our route planned. Simple as that and that's that's the whole key right there's there's loads of maths that you can do to work out all your vectors so you're accounting for your wind vector and your headwind and your crosswind and resolving and doing loads of trigonometry goodness which is great don't get me wrong love a bit of trig when computer systems like this exist right make your life easy or if you enjoy doing the maths do the maths absolutely go for it and then key it into here and see if you come out with the same numbers and that gives you the reassurance that your maths was correct so you can verify um your sort of validate your mathematics um and have that certainty that what you've calculated is actually what you need to do in real life or in the simulator of course hope you find it interesting very quick crash course uh, questions comments down below in the uh, in the comments section as per usual hope you enjoyed see you on the next one